Ollie. You Woody excited to be going on a camping trip? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna make sure I've, all of them are in there. Okay, so. This is the first inaugural trip of the travel trailer and everything so far is going pretty well. Um, the trailer pulls really nicely, uh, so <laughs> I guess I got that one right. Um, we just passed through Tucson and on our way to the White Mountains of Arizona, we're going to be camping at about seven or 8,000 feet and uh, should be a good time. So I guess I'll just show you more clips of on our trip up there. Olive, are we gonna go camping? All right, so right now we're in Globe, Arizona, and this is pretty much the last stop that you can get fuel, food, and take a bathroom break before you hit the Salt River Canyon. It's not a huge canyon, but it definitely is a canyon where you wanna have trailer breaks. So I've just double checked everything, made sure everything's good. And, uh, and the next clips you're gonna see are of the Salt River Canyon, because it is kind of a cool looking canyon. The trailer is set up now and we have officially used it for its first night of camping. I think I had probably about the best night's sleep that I've had in a month. I don't know if that was just a relief of getting here and the fact that nothing broke, <laughs> but uh, I slept pretty well. So I'll give you a little walk around tour of the trailer, which is pretty much all stuff you've seen. And then if I can convince my wife, I'll give you a little bit of a walk around on the inside, kind of show you how we have things stored. Uh, and then we'll get to others. A little bit of background on the area we are camping at. This is the Apache Sitgraves National Forest in the White Mountains of Arizona. And we are just off of one of the four service roads south of Buffalo Crossing by the East Fork of the Black River. Uh, so anyway, with the trailer being set up, it's all stuff you guys have seen. You saw me put the uh, stabilizers down. And then on the other side, we just uh, dug a little bit of hole so that we could level it um, left to right. And then obviously I used the tongue jack uh, to get it level front to back. And I don't have it quite exactly level as I like it sloped just about an inch or two this way so that all the water runs off the roof. Um, if you follow the build, you obviously know it is a flat roof. So 
um, I kind of knew that going into it that I would just have to uh, cognizantly, I don't even know if that's a word, uh, but just be a little mindful when I set up so that the water would flow off the front. This homemade awning and rock guard, which I showed at the very end of the solar video, will eventually get a piece of aluminum trim right above it so that when all that water is running off, it'll be able to be shed to the sides uh, versus going into the hinge area. So right now it's not really waterproofing anything, just kind of keeping shade out. Uh, but eventually once I get that piece of trim there, uh, this window will be able to remain open during uh, rainstorms. Uh, so <laughs> that's uh, be a pretty good upgrade. On the front of the trailer, I've got my DIY coupler lock. Not really a huge issue here as we're camping with a bunch of my wife's family, so there's pretty much someone here all the time. But I figured I'd just get in the habit of putting that on for when we do some longer road trips in areas where we are not going to be with family. And then the next thing I'll show you is the solar setup. At this point, the solar and 12 volt battery setup has been in continuous operation for over three days now and everything seems to be operating as it should. What I'm finding is that throughout the night, the battery is drawn down just a little bit, mostly by the 12 volt Dometic cooler. And in the morning, I see the charge controller reading a bulk charge just for a couple of hours. And then for the rest of the day, it is in a float charge. So what that says to me is that uh, the solar is able to keep up with everything that's being put on it and the lithium rely on battery is able to store more than enough energy to run that cooler and lights throughout the night and not be drawn down too much eventually i am going to be installing a battery fuel gauge or as a kind of a battery monitor so i can get a more accurate reading on how much this is drawn down and when i do that i'll definitely give you guys an update and right now i'm going to show you how i can check on the solar panels with a cool little ladder i got off of amazon And now my wife is gonna give you a little bit of a walk around of the inside. All right, come on in. So we've been camping for a few days now and we wanna show you how we've been utilizing the space. Up above in these cabinets, we have lots of odds and ends. We're storing jackets. I have a box for all of our medical supplies, bags. Um, on this side, I've got lots of things like crafts and magazines and again just extra all the kids stuff all the kids stuff up here um below our dinette we're storing our shoes i have a bag of games here and then in the dinette seat that's closest to the door right we, by the top <laughs> we're storing all the dog items so we have her leash and dog food and so forth. All right. So the dining room area, the dinette, has been working great as a bed for my daughter. Uh, when she wakes up in the morning, we simply roll up her bedding and store it in the back and put the table back up and it's just been functioning wonderfully. Once we arrived, I pulled out some of our lighter items like Kleenex and napkins and dish towels and I'm storing them up here on this shelf. And in the kitchen, all the overhead cabinets are storing food items for us while we're camping. They were not necessarily stored up there during the travel process, but once we got here, we stocked the shelves. Um, here at the kitchen sink, that's the next project Joe's gonna have working on, uh, functional water, and <laughs> that'll happen down here under the, the kitchen sink. Okay. All the drawers, we have our lockable with the child lock, so during travel, we can lock them and they won't open. Okay, so see how it's locked right now? You can't pull it out? Well, you're gonna put this magnet right here and it opens. Nice. This is a little lock here. Okay, so in the top drawer, I'm storing things like my spices and all my kitchen type utensils. The second drawer down currently, I have things like our mugs and plates bowls eventually this third drawer down we plan to have our camp stove right now i'm just using it as a handy um, storage for snacks where our daughter can come and grab a snack easily 
And then down here at the bottom, I'm storing all of my larger um, kitchen items that won't necessarily fit above. In the fancy cardboard box. In the fancy cardboard box. <laughs> <laughs> so that I don't scratch when we're traveling. And again, they all lock. For back, we have the bed platform. Below it, we have our Dometic, which you've seen before. We're keeping all of our veggies and fruit, lunch meat. Um, it's working great. We enjoyed having that. Above it, of course, is our sleeping platform. And I'm loving the storage that's under the bed. We are storing all of her bedding from the front here, our dirty clothes, extra odds and ends. And then up above, we're keeping our, our fresh and uh, clean clothes above. All right, if we're a little size, uh, maybe hop on the bed. Right. Yeah, the bed actually has been very, very comfortable. We can't complain about the... Here's a little size perspective of the rear bed. I can stretch out completely, and uh, actually all three of us can lay on it pretty comfortably. Yeah, we've been getting some really great sleep. We've been very pleased with That's it. That's why I never want to leave, because it's so good sleep. <laughs> <laughs> And we're able to really make it dark in here at night with them. Oh yeah, I haven't really talked about those, but yeah, we added blinds to all the windows. Except the door. <laughs> we didn't add blinds to the door window. I know, eventually we will. If you guys watched our camping video from a couple of years ago, you'll know that one of the things we like to do up in the White Mountains of Arizona is look for wild strawberries and raspberries. And uh, oftentimes will grow in these burned out sections of forest. I don't know if it's the nutrients or whatever left over from the fire, but we have a lot of good luck uh, searching in these areas. And that's our bounty from just a couple of minutes of foraging. And they're pretty darn good. And I always like to point things like this out because a lot of people get bummed out with forest fires. Obviously they do a lot of destruction and everything kind of looks like moonscape afterwards. But there are plants that get a chance to grow that never had a chance to grow when it was a full forest. And a lot of the wildlife like elk and deer end up having a lot more undergrowth that they can eat than they can in some of those real thick areas you see off in the distance. And here's a little example of what the bushes look like. There's a few raspberries on it, just like that. There you go. Perfection. There's another one on there. Is that thunder? No, that's it. <laughs> Would you say this is your favorite part of camping? It has to be. This and fishing, my two favorite parts. <laughs> Come on here, here. Oh, I got this. Whoa! Yeah! <laughs> nice! Okay, I got one! A journey? Ollie. Oh, good girl. Marley, do you see the rams? Yeah, I see two. That's a pretty rare sight. Are you going to give Daddy a tour of your fort? Yep. These are for the door. That's the door. You just lean them up like this. Okay. Easy. <sighs> Ooh, that hurts. See this slot? This slot is secretly a little tiny, tiny entrance. That's an entrance? Yep, a tiny, tiny one, just in case. The inside something. now? Yep. So, the inside of that is a little tiny, tiny uh, door. Okay. Right, and here's a little tiny safe. And then just here, you can just sit down and stuff. These are decorated. Ow! Asians. <laughs> and then you can put loads of flowers in that little slit. 
Oh, these I'm holding are my spears that I made. Let me I, see them up close. Show them I to the camera. I kept my four spears. And how did you carve those spears? With my pocket knife. Did you just get it on this trip? Mm-hmm. That's a window. Can you show me what it looks like while you're inside? Sure. You got to wave to me. Nice. I was up here on top of the mountain checking messages and I saw some smoke over one of the ridges and I figured I'd go check it out just in case it was a hunter or a hiker that maybe broke a leg and started a, a signal fire. Uh, but it looks like it was lightning. This is a section of the National Forest that burned several years ago in a forest fire and here is the tree that looks like it was struck by lightning. I'm not going to get too close to this thing because it is ready to fall. Um, but uh, next time I come up here, I'm just going to monitor this. We got about two inches of rain last night, so I'm not too concerned with uh, this going anywhere. But uh, definitely something to be concerned about, especially in the western forests. And here is just another view of it. There it is in the background. I did not try to put it out uh, because that's what you call a widow maker. And I don't think my wife's ready to be a widow yet, but I probably will uh, maybe send a message to the Forest Service just so they're aware of it. I'm still not back to the truck, but I'm far away from the tree to have much concern. And I saw one of the most useful plants in the forest. I figured I'd show you. If you're ever out of toilet paper, you can grab one of these guys. Um, some people call it the toilet paper plant, and I'll put a link to the actual name, but uh, pretty nice soft wipe. Given the rules for golf? So the rules are this is a par 3 course, every hole is a par 3, and uh, you hit it where it lies, it doesn't matter where it lies, and to be in the hole you have to be within the length of the club. Link to the club, you're in. All right, and Les right now holds the course record. And all that is the course. Oh, yeah. You're up with me, Joe. Ah, looks like I'm going back easy. All right, I'm still far. Yeah, this is the another above you. Far again. Oh, oh baby. Plus baby. I know. They look That's easy, I should say. Mm. It's gonna be, it's gonna be 30 seconds of golf. Look at it. Oh! Is it in? Almost. <laughs> <It's a little laughs> Cooking breakfast in the White Mountains probably 35, 40 years, something like that. And how many years you've been cooking on this uh, custom pan? This is a custom yard sale pan that was electric skillet, and we just took all the electronics off of it and uh, been cooking on this one for probably 35 years at least. And uh, still the same as the day we started it. I built the handles for it, took the plastic handles off, and uh, it works really good. It tastes good, too. <laughs> Wait till the pancakes go on. Oh, yeah. First flip. <laughs> Here's a, that's my standard flip right there. Well, I've got a 
They run together, Joe. No problem. He just cut them. Reverse flip, Joe. Yeah. All one motion. You don't have to change your hand position. Done. Beautiful. Such a good camping dog. That's very true. I need to stop. No, you're good. Are these caves pretty cool? Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. Try it. I was just a jump daddy. That is actually really fun. Oh, this will look so beautiful in it. I love it, Mom. Thank you. Aren't they pretty? That's a really nice bouquet. Uh -huh. I know. These are really If cool. I was to get married again outside, I would consider a wildflower bouquet. Well, I hope you never do. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't to me. I'm gonna let my ladybug friend go. Okay. Watch. Or he just likes to stay with me. Maybe give him a little blow. He likes it. I'm just gonna let him. He's kind of climbing up my sleeve thinking it's grass. Okay. Maybe I should just set him on a plant. Good. Oh. I think that would be good. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this trip. Overall, it was a huge success. Uh, today is our last day camping and we are heading uh, out of the National Forest on our way home. Uh, this will probably be the last trip you see, or the last video you see on the tr uh, travel trailer for at least a couple months. And then after a couple months of doing other things, I might get back to doing some of the upgrades. And uh, anyway, check me out on Instagram. If you like these videos, give it a thumbs up. And uh, do you girls have anything to say? I don't think so. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.